from our children, Miss Ethel Roosevelt and young Master Quentin Roosevelt. Please indulge me as I say a few words of introduction. As a very young child, Ethel was, I am sad to say, prone to tantrums. And she was so strong, there were times when her governess and I feared she would kill us both. I am proud that she has grown into a remarkably kind and helpful young woman. Quentin, our youngest child, is a merry little soul who never ceases to remind me of his father. Occasionally, he yields to the temptation of that patron devil of small boys and finds himself in a bit of trouble. At other moments, he delights me with a recitation of beautiful prose or poetry. It is with much pride that I present to you our children, Ethel and Quentin Roosevelt. Thank you, Mother. I am Ethel Roosevelt and I'm 13 years old. I was born August 13th, 1891 in Oyster Bay, New York. As a toddler, as mother said, I was sturdy and strong-willed and I was even described as a bit of a tyrant. I enjoyed playing with people, not toys. And my favorite game was when mother would lie on the floor and I would pick every single one of her hairpins out of her hair. My governess always said she never had any control over me. And I took after my Aunt Bamie, my, my father's sister, Anna. As I got older, I became very mature and, and I am considered the most responsible of my siblings. Anytime mother is sick, I take care of the children. Mother and father trust and count on me to take care of for my siblings when they can't because they know that I can handle it. In fact, just last year, mother sent me to Sagamore Hill to supervise the servants who were preparing for our arrival. They were getting the house ready and they needed someone there to supervise them. She trusted me, even at only 12 years old, to handle the job. When I was 10 years old, after President McKinley's assassination, my father became the president. We unexpectedly had to move into the White House. You can imagine my fear knowing I had to start new, leaving everything I loved and cherished to become the president's daughter. When father began his term as president, it was decided that I was to tend to boarding school, not terribly far from the White House. I would stay for weekdays and come home for weekends. I dreaded leaving my family to make all new friends at Washington Cathedral School for Girls. In the beginning, I was bullied by the other girls for being the president's daughter. People assumed I would be a snotty, spoiled girl because of my father's position. While I was away, I, feared, I also feared that my fun-loving and playful father would become busy with his many responsibilities and duties as president. But I quickly learned that father would stay exactly the same and always make time for his children. However, with my father being the president, a lot of attention is directed to him and his family. Since we moved into the White House, the press is always eager to get information about us. I've never liked this. I still don't like this. I have always been shy and quiet, so the attention drawn to me is something that makes me feel very uncomfortable. Unlike my older half-sister, Alice, she soaks up all the attention. All of us siblings are very close. We're all very different in many ways, but have, each, have always been each other's best friends. All of us have had to adjust to being the president's children in our own ways. And it was a very sudden change for us. We were all pretty young, uh, but it's an adventure. And in fact, speaking of siblings, I have my younger brother, my youngest brother, Quentin here, and he's gonna tell you about his time in the White House gang. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to first start with the names that my family called me. So my mother called me a fine bad little boy, which I probably appreciated, but probably didn't. Uh, father called me Quinnikins, which was pretty funny. And the White House gang called me Q. I was born on, I was born in Washington, DC on November 19th, 1897. I was three years old when father became president. My siblings are Alice, Ted, Ethel, Kermit, and Archie. I see, or er, we were, I was on, I was walking down the street one day and a reporter came up. He asked a personal question about my father. I said to him, 
I see him occasionally, but know nothing about his family life. <laughs> the White House gang members are Charlie Taft, Archie, Archie, my brother, Earl Looker, Dick Chu, which we called Sailor, and Bob Stead, which I called Slacks. My stories that I'm going to tell today are a story about spitfalls and a story about Earl Looker. So the first story is the spitfalls. We were running around in the White House doing naughty stuff as we usually do. And we decided to shoot spitfalls at Old Hickory's picture. Old Hickory is Andrew Jackson. And port it was his portrait. So we were shooting spitballs at him. And once we got a whole bunch of spitballs on there, we arranged it. We had three on his forehead, like an Arabian dancer, I said. We had one on each earlobe, like anybody with ear piercings, and a whole bunch on his nose to scare the flies away. And one on each button of his shirt. So after that, we got tired of it and decided to go do more adventurous stuff. Once we went to bed, we, father came in and snuck me out of the room without, without any of the gang members knowing. And he told me that I had to take all of them, off, all the spitballs off the por portrait. As you know, I was, as you may know, I was very frustrated with that because I loved it. But I went into my bedroom and told them, told the gang that I had personally taken down every single spitball, but I didn't tell them why. So the next day when we woke up, my father took me to the court and he was the jury and the judge. And he, and, but first he asked us who took down the first, or who shot the first spitball? Each of us said, I did, but I said, I think I did. And father got very mad about that and said, I, you think, or you know. And then he was the judge and the jury in the court. And he said I was guilty, but he said the truth, be quicker with the truth. So my punishment for that was I couldn't have any of the gang members over for an entire week. And that was painful. Of course, I still got Archie to do fun stuff with, but it was really fun with my friends. So it was really hard to have them gone. So the next story is the nails in the head. Well, almost in the head. So it was 4 p.m. and father was on his off of work hour or whatever. And he, he we went up to the attic and he had taken his jacket off and done it and had, put it like this and started chasing us around like bears. Father was close to a pole and Archie turned off the lights and father hit his head on the pole and almost got a, um, uh, <laughs> sorry. Earl turned on the lights and had, and father had seen a nail that was just about eye level that had almost hit him. So father went down to bathe his forehead and we had decided to lock, we were so mad at Earl Looker that we had locked him in a chest and sat on it. He was sobbing after a little while. And when father came back up, he took us off the lid and took, char er, and took Earl out. He said, the mothballs must have made his eyes water because he didn't want to make us feel like we did something bad to him. So after that, he told us that you should never turn off lights near when someone is near a pole and never leave anyone in a, anyone in a chest for more than 60 seconds. And then, thank you.
and I will pass it over to whoever's talking. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Do we turn ourselves off and on? Is that what happens here, Liz? Um, uh, oh, Mrs. Roosevelt or Theodore, uh, Mr. President, do you uh, have anything to add there? Well, I understand that someone may have posted something in the writing part. Yes, yeah, so I think, let me look. Okay, question, what about your pets? Oh my, we have lots of, we have lots of pets in the White House. That is for sure. Well, there was one time. Do you want to tell it? Do you know the oh, yes. snakes? Do you remember that one time? Oh, well, here's one. Oh, my. I'll tell the horse story. What is that? A lion? He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Cat. So I'll tell you the story. So I don't remember what sibling it was, but one of our sibling, one of my siblings was sick. So we decided to take him at what? Oh yes. Father, which sibling was that that was sick? It was Archie. It was Archie. So I decided to get Archie's horse and take it up the elevator into his room. And do you remember? Yeah. And Tony. He was, was, father, was he upset or was he happy? Archie or the pony? <laughs> Archie. Archie was very happy. Archie was, he recovered from the illness, which I'm not certain of the medicine, but our servants, they did not recover as well because you do remember there was evidence of the pony in the elevator, in the elevator. and in the hallway. <laughs> Oh, and let me Pugikins, I have a reminder of some of your friends. I believe one of your friends left these here. Do you do you recall these? <laughs> oh, oh yes. <laughs> do you recall that story? Yes, the one that fit this key. Do you remember that? It involved something Mrs. Roosevelt was very proud of. Oh my oh, goodness! Yes. I rem I yes. <laughs> We were all muddy and coming in and we were, there was like a whole bunch of fine china in the White House. And so we had got it out and we had found this key in it. And Father, what did it fit? It was the cabinets Mrs. Roosevelt had put in to hold the historical White House china from all the adventures. Oh, yes. 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 So we had like gone into the China or something. I can't really remember it that well. That was an adventure that, yeah. I assure you, I did not forget. <laughs> the, the boys with their muddy hands unlocked the China cabinet and rearranged every piece of China and all of the labels, creating mud smears upon the glass and the cabinets. Worst of all, it went unnoticed by the White House cleaning staff for over 10 days. <laughs> it was in the public foyer of the White House. I shudder to think of the many guests that passed by that muddy <laughs> spectacle. And later, Quentin admitted that he crept down to that hallway every morning to see if their deed had been discovered. And fortunately, nothing was damaged in all of it, so. <laughs> Yeah, Just I remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Good times with the gang. <laughs> I do remember the one with the fountain. Oh yes. So, me and the so there were the workers working on the fountain because it wasn't running. Can't really remember. Um, and we had decided that we would go 
see if it would work by turning the water on. So, of course it worked and the workers got drenched. So we decided to go turn it back off and then back on again. <laughs> then they started chasing us. And we were, as we usually are when people chased us, horrified. And we ran as fast as our little wits could run. <laughs> but that was, no matter how many times we get chased, all of our stories are great, so. so what's the next question? I, so, okay, let's see. Tell me about your mom. Oh my, mother is, she is lo a very lovely lady. And I take after her. Oh, I definitely take, um, take after her more than um, a lot of the siblings do, I feel like. Don't you feel like I do? Yeah, definitely more than me. <laughs> <laughs> all, I can definitely more than me. Although, Quentin, one of your chums in the White House gang remarked that uh, he thought I was so understanding of all of your adventures that when I was young, I must have been a little boy also. <laughs> but Ethel, Ethel, oh, you, you may go. <laughs> oh, but Ethel, you are much more uh, reserved as am I. Mm -hmm. And you also believe as I always have that uh, one can best serve God by serving others and mm -hmm. And then you have devoted your life to service. Yes. And um, one thing my mother always said was that, that she always says is um, a woman should only be publicly recognized when she, when it's her birth, her marriage and her death. <laughs> and I, I definitely follow that. <laughs> this is interesting stuff. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> What's the best get our picture back on? We can't get our picture back on. Wow. Does Liz have to do that? The host asked, me, oh, start my video. Oh, okay. There we go. Yay. We're back. <laughs> there, Quentin, did you have fun in the White House? Yes, we did. What was your favorite event? Did you have one? Um, I mean, a lot of them I, I loved. Um, but I would say my favorite ones are the ones where father joins in. Those yeah. are the best ones. Because how, did you get that, how did you get the pony in the White House? Through the elevator. Yeah, I let it into the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> It, it not, easily. not easily, yeah. No. Very carefully, <laughs> yes. I understand it was a bit frightened at first, but then it saw its own image in the mirror. Yes. <laughs> and that encouraged it to get on the elevator. And you did have the help of one of the White House servants as well. <laughs> <laughs> what was it our head usher said? Did the White House was not a place for anyone with a nervous disposition? No, it was not a place for a nervous person. Yes, in those that was days. it. Yes. <laughs> uh, Quentin, I saw uh, a picture of you with some White House policemen. Did you put, like the White House policemen? Um, well, no, because one time I, me and the gang were on the roof and threw a ginormous snowball on one of their heads. So, oh, no. right as the man was saluting me as I exited the White House carriage. <laughs> yes, he was uninjured. Did you get punished, Quentin? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you know, about every one of my adventures, I get punished, but I always, at the end of it, I say it's worth it. <laughs> Back to the judge and jury. <laughs> yeah. What was the best thing about being in the White House? Mm -hmm. For me, it was the bed in my bedroom mm -hmm. that I stayed in when I came home from school. I just loved it. For me, it was probably having my, my friends. 
the White House gang. I had remembered a story that I am pretty sure father joined in on. <laughs> we were all skate roller skating around the hallways. Yes, we were. <laughs> and and yes, father had joined in. And we have we'd done that for for probably an hour on the red carpet and on the hardwood and everywhere that you can imagine. And we once we were done, we had walked out the door to do other adventures and had seen marks on the floor from our roller skate. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, did Quentin all provide you comic relief? Oh, most definitely. And very precocious. He would yeah. choose words that he thought he knew what they meant. And <laughs> he would go around spouting these words, but he didn't understand the meaning of them. So <laughs> it was very entertaining. <laughs> now, I don't believe any man ever had as much fun being president or any family ever had as much fun in the White House. Or perhaps the Clevelands. Or maybe the Lincolns. Yes. Yeah, that's... Yes. <laughs> no, we had, with the White House gang, young Quinton's gang, we had a tie to President Lincoln's White House gang with his children and to President Garfield's children who were there just a short bit and to the Clevelands and others. So. Yes, we had quite a historic gang with the White House gang. Evelyn <laughs> Quentin, you have an a older sister, and she kept something in her purse that was pretty unusual. What was oh my that? goodness? Her snake. What? <laughs> her pet snake. Yes. <laughs> Did she startle people with it? Oh, man, yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Did it have a name? Oh, I, well, do you remember what it was, Father? Was it uh, Emily Spinach, right? It, was that what it was? Very yes. Good. yes, good memory. I, if I recall right, that's what it was. Um, <laughs> Emily Spinach. <laughs> em Emily after my rather thin sister and Spinach because it was a green garter snake. Yes. <laughs> I think the most terrifying part of that for some was her wearing it as a necklace or bracelet at times. So. <laughs> I have a story about snakes. Oh. oh dear. <laughs> I can't really recall, but I can remember having five snakes. Mm -hmm. And I had wanted to show father. And he was in a meeting. And I had startled every single person in the world with those five snakes. And, and one of them had gotten into my shirt. Mm -hmm. And there were just a whole bunch of mistakes with having snakes in, in the White House. Like, <laughs> ever do it if you're president or you, president's son. You, you did succeed in clearing out the waiting room. Yes. So. <laughs> And I thought it was a great family reunion with some of the congressmen that were out there. <laughs> yeah. So have other questions come in? Yes, let's see. Did Ethel go on the point to point with the boys? Oh my, no. When you were younger, you were yes. quite the tomboy. I was, I, yes, I was a tomboy as I was a, when I was younger, but I, the Quint no Quentin longer. and the White House gang were no, it's my, that was my cup of tea. <laughs> we were quite something. <laughs> Did you have nicknames? Did your parents call you a nickname? I was Elephant Johnny. <laughs> and why was that? Oh, I cannot remember. It, Father, why do you call me an Elephant Johnny? Well, oh. I can... It, I am not certain how he came up with that name. You were you were a sturdy child, but I would yes. not call you a plump child. No. I have often wondered, and I have never confirmed this with Mr. Roosevelt, 
but because you were a bit of a tyrant when you were young, yes. there uh, was in the 1880s in uh, New Orleans, New Orleans yes. there was a saloon keeper there who became quite famous because he bribed people with beer for their votes. And he was known across the nation and his name was Elephant Johnny. So, so I have yeah. often thought that perhaps <laughs> your father called you that in remembrance of, of that other tyrant. <laughs> and, yeah. but when you were older, um, I believe uh, you would have been uh, married by this time. Mr. Roosevelt referred to you in a letter as Ethelie Bye. Yep. Ethelie Bye, yes. Because you did remind him so much of his sister that he called Bye. I do uh, remember that, yes. Mm -hmm. And then we had Quintikins and Quintiqui. <laughs> Yes. Any other questions come in? I once heard somebody ask you, Quentin, what you like to do. What do, do I know? like to do? Yeah. Anything naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're not supposed to do? I think yeah. I heard that, yeah. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> well, I do. It looks like someone's sending in. Ethel, would you mind reading some of those? Yes. Uh, let's see. What about the horse? Mm. What about the Algonquin? Algonquin, our horse? Yes, Algonquin, Algonquin the, the pony. pony. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. One of them. <laughs> one of them. Is, we had quite a few horses. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was Algonquin. Algonquin. Algonquin's <laughs> also the one that Quinton loved to ride through Washington when he would go to the Force Public School and then come home. So. It was either a bicycle or a pony. Yes. What was the downside to living in the White House? Mm. Well, for me, I, I was very scared to move into the White House because I loved my life in Sagamore Hill. And uh, it was not easy for me to change and to move into such a big place. And after it was announced that I would be attending boarding school, uh, I was afraid of what people would think of me. And I was bullied a lot for being the president's daughter because, you know, as I said, people thought that I would be snotty and spoiled which I was uh, the opposite. So that was my downside. I wasn't with my family as much. I was only with them on weekdays or weekends and holidays. Did father allow you in the, uh, at Sagamore Hill, did he allow you in the library? Yeah, uh, well, yes, I love reading. Yeah, it's a beautiful room. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. For me, the downside was probably having to be proper <laughs> some of the time because I'm not that, I'm not the type, you know? <laughs> I, if I could, I would take off my tie and just go run around and get muddy and throw snowballs and do whatever, annoy my siblings and eat messy, you know. <laughs> you like so that's probably the downside is being proper. Yeah. Yes. And often we did that with our point to point walks. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys learn to swim in the summer out there at Sagamore Hill? Oh, well. Did your father have something to do with that? <laughs> yes, we would go down to the bay and launch ourselves in, so. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, Mr. President, that you sometimes just threw them in the water. Oh, yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Oh. That was a good way to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and, Quinton, speaking of the water, do you remember our game Stagecoach? 
Oh, I love that game. That's a. I oh yes. Do you remember <laughs> when we played it on the boat? Yes. Yes. So our game stagecoach was, I would tell a story, and the participants would pick a part of the stagecoach, maybe the wheels or the driver or the horses. And as I told the story, when I told each part, they would jump out of the boat and come back in. But when I said stagecoach, they would jump out and stay in the water. Then I counted heads to make sure everyone came back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were there other questions, Ethel? Ethel, is it true that you had your coming out or debut party before leaving the White House? Yes, that is true. When I was 18, when I turned 18, I wasn't quite 18, but I was, it, mm -hmm. I was becoming an adult at this time. Yes. And I wanted to do it before I left the White House. Yes. I wanted to have it in the White House. <laughs> and I recall when we left <laughs> the White House, uh, just a short time later, we left in March and, and your, your coming out was in late December. Yes. Quentin said that he felt as though he had a hole in his stomach. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Ethel and Quentin, if you had a choice of your father being anything else, a <laughs> fireman or a policeman, what would that be? Um, well, he always enjoyed being the, a rancher in North Dakota. So I would probably choose that. OK. That makes sense. There's also a comment that, um, Quentin, for you, that uh, one of our guests has enjoyed seeing the pictures of your friend and you of Roswell Pinckney. Was Roswell one of your friends? <laughs> yes. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> I could not quite remember. Oh, that it's been many years ago, so. <laughs> and you made many friends in Washington. Oh, see. yes, most definitely. Even the one man who, I'm not, not sure you would call him a friend, who wanted you to autograph baseballs. Hmm. Oh, yes. yes, yes, I remember that. Yes, and he sold them in the sporting goods store around the corner from the White House. You were not pleased with that because you knew I would not have been pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it's about time for some final thoughts, maybe. What would you like to say to wrap up all we've heard tonight? I am so glad you put this together. Thank you so much. This was a wonderful opportunity. Very much so. And it's good to see Ethel and Quentin. Yes, it is. Yes, it's <laughs> lovely to see all of you. Yes. You sure don't look your age. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I it was, was good, to, to, I'd good like to meet you, Medora, uh, the summer before last, and good to see you again tonight. Yes. I'd like to invite everybody to put your camera back on. And at the bottom left hand corner of your screen is the stop video. If you just click on that, you will appear again. And we're going to take a gallery portrait of oh. everybody here tonight. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, if you will, if your camera's off, if you would take a minute and get it back on here and we'll work on getting a picture of our group tonight. You want us to click on stop video, Liz? No, no you're fine. Are. You guys are fine. Anybody who doesn't have their camera on, I will try to assist here. Amy, where's Ryan? <laughs> Get him in the picture. <laughs> Amy, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I'll take it just a second here to get everybody on, I think. Almost there. Isn't it amazing we can do this all across the country at the same time? Mm -hmm. Just amazing. Just is, amazing. I wish really I had this awesome. technology as president. <laughs> <laughs> and you imagine what he would have done with 
<laughs> modern technology. Ah, boy. Would you have been on, would you have been you on Twitter? Imagine what Quentin and your gang would have done. Oh. Yeah, more importantly. Okay, here it goes, and we will post this picture in a little bit. Everybody smile. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. President, before you get away, can you talk about a little bit about Joseph Buckland Bishop, who is a colleague that later writes the book of letters to your children. Yeah. You considered him a pretty good buddy. Did he ever meet the children and spend time with them? Yes, and with Mrs. Roosevelt. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. in Panama. Yeah. Yes. No, uh, he, so he was yeah. a close colleague is what I have been able to. You yeah, know. he was. And I think did a bully job with those letters to my children, which when mm -hmm. I wrote those, I planned on those being preserved for posterity. And so I was glad they were able to show that side of me from one of my, the Spanish American war letters that I had one of the Pawnee who was one of our members of the Rough Riders do the illustrations for me. If you've seen the letters to my children, you know my artwork is not as good as it should be, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it was delightful to have that published and I think he did a delightful job. On it. Uh, oh, that probably oh. didn't come through very well. Ah, showing my artwork. <laughs> Well, hey, um, so let's begin to wrap up. Anybody uh, got anything final? Obviously, we want to, uh, we can't very well say thank you, uh, but can you give some thumbs up or applause or something to Ethel and Quentin? You know, very nice. Uh, thank you. Let's have them back sometime, you know, uh, uh, to uh, give some more wisdom. And uh, thanks to their mother for setting this up. Yes. And uh, I think Margaret uh, Griffin and uh, Mr. Yeah. And Mrs. Roosevelt were very key in this part. And um, we'll, uh, we'll say thank you to them. And uh, we only have one or two quick things of business. Liz, anything else we should do here before we sign out? We want to tell you about the next meeting because it's going to be pretty cool too. Oh. So we're going to have this speaker, Richard Zacks, is going to talk about the Island of Vice. And um, we're oh, going to be dear. getting these books out. And uh, that should be pretty cool, I think. Uh, he's going to give a presentation. Does anybody know Mr. Zacks? Uh, well, he wrote this book, and it's pretty cool. Uh, this won't be quite the children's hour. It'll be a little bit more. Racy is what I understand. So we're going from uh, the uh, the coolness and the uh, innocence mm -hmm. of the children to uh, the time when Roosevelt was police commissioner. Yeah. And um, uh, very rough time in New York. Yes, very interesting stuff. So with that, I think we're at the end, um, and we'll th say thank you once more, and we'll uh, invite you to leave the meeting. Thank you so much, Edith, or Ethel, and Quentin. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye.